folks. Welcome to another installment of Retrace in History. We are in the Connemaw River Valley in the community of Mineral Point, Pennsylvania, just north of Johnstown, made infamous because of the Johnstown Flood of 1889. However, we're not standing in the Johnstown Flood National Memorial, though you can see there is a National Park Service symbol over my shoulder. We're technically in the Allegheny Portage Railroad National Historic Site. We've explored this historic site a few years back on Retrace in History, but one of the units is several miles away and preserves the first railroad tunnel in American history. Now the good news for you, this is gonna be a nice brisk, probably 15 minute video. We're gonna go into the forest to see it. The bad news for me is, I gotta trek two and a half miles back to see it. Workers hired to build the Portage Railroad created the pathway before you. They dug, filled, and leveled the land and built a flat railroad bed between here and Staple Bend Tunnel. This now abandoned trace, known as the Long Level, provided a two and a half mile trail for the nation's first railroad tunnel. As you hike toward the tunnel, look for remains of their pioneering railroad. Workers, including many immigrants from Ireland and Wales, quarried stone from trailside rock and outcrop. Masons used these stones to build culverts that kept the roadbed dry, trimming sandstone into rectangular blocks called sleepers to support the railroad tracks. A few culverts and many sleepers are still in place. Stone foundations near the tunnel mark the site of workshops, houses for the workers, and possibly a small store. A recap on what the Allegheny Portage Railroad was. Uh, in the 1830s, uh, the state of Pennsylvania was quite upset they were losing out and being the gateway to the West. For years, especially in the 18th century, travelers moving into the interior of North America would have used trails across the Allegheny Mountains. But those were quite some treacherous passage to traverse it. Even paved still are in 2024. So, uh, in the state of New York, a canal was set up, the Erie Canal, that allowed people to have a much smoother ride across into the interior of North America. And the Rudder Canal is building up as well. Pennsylvania wanted to get in on this game, and they established the Pennsylvania Mainline Canal. The problem was trying to get the canal boats over the Allegheny Mountains, those mountains that were causing the whole mess to begin with. Because if you wanted to get your boats across all by waterway, that would have been a heck of a long tunnel that, as much as I am in awe of the engineering of the 19th century, even then they could not tunnel, build a tunnel that long to cross the Allegheny Mountains. So, an interesting concept came up. That was, it would be a canal all but about 30 miles. The miles that go over the mountains between the communities of Johnstown and Hollidaysburg. At these locations, canal boats will be taken out of the basin. They'd be put on rail cars and then through a series of inclined planes be pulled further and further up the mountaintop before descending to the other side. Uh, doing this, would solve the problem, but required quite the feat of engineering. Uh, we're in the infancy of railroads. At this time, people weren't quite sure how to apply railroads. I mean, a lot of these locomotives did not have the muscle to go up steep grades, let alone going along a flat grade. Beside having to get over the mountain itself, I would argue the two biggest obstacles Mother Nature threw at these engineers was an oxbow in the Connemaw River, which engineers decided to cross with a massive single span stone arch bridge, which stood from the time of the Portage Railroad until being destroyed in the Johnstown flood of 1889. The Pennsylvania Railroad would replace it immediately after the flood, and the two arch span is still used today by Norfolk Southern, by the way, whose tracks are right beneath my feet as I walk on the Portage Railroad grade. The other obstacle was getting through a very steep portion of the Ma Allegheny Mountain. There's a point where the river makes a sharp bend to send into Johnstown that is just essentially a sheer cliffside. Well, the solution, you had to tunnel your way through the mountain. So they couldn't get away with avoiding tunnels. They still had to make a 900 foot long tunnel for the railroad. Even in isolated rocky forests, engineers knew that water possessed 
one of the most serious problems for railroads and firm road beds. To control and channel springs and streams, they designed and Masons built 73 culverts and 85 drains along the 36 mile Allegheny Portage Railroad. And what you're seeing down here is one of the few that survived to this day. A good many of them collapsed after the railroad was abandoned in the 1850s. But along this two mile trail to Stable Bend Tunnel, you can also see the engineering that went into culverts like this. Looks like a spent rock from when the quarry men came through here back in the 1830s. I don't think it was used as a sleeper. I don't see any holes, although well, I can see an indentation looks like right there. I don't think it's shown up on the camera. So maybe this was a sleeper used on the Porter Drill. These were definitely sleepers used on the Porter Trail Road. You can see the two holes chiseled in to allow the nails in to hold the rails. I don't know how well it's picking up on the camera, but this is an intact set of sleepers. Now, this gives you a better idea of how the sleepers are laid out to hold the rail down. And the reason this set survives and elsewhere they're just scattered along the trail is because we're on a segment of the Portage Railroad that was double tracked. So the trail we're on, there would have been a third row of sleepers. Oh, behold, tunnel. <laughs> Tunnel! Construction would begin on this first American Railroad Tunnel in November of 1831, with crews working on both the eastern and western portals simultaneously, that way to quicken the pace. However, it would still take about a year and a half to complete this project, and they would not bore through the whole way until December 21st, 1832. Now, the workers were Welsh and Irish. They were paid $13 a month, as well as room and board for their work, and they would have to operate in 12-hour workdays for six days a week. In total, they would remove 14,900 cubic yards of bedrock, and how they did that was a combination of hand tools and black powder. Now, what they would do is that they chiseled into the bedrock, they would drill a number of bores about 36 inches deep into the bedrock and fill that with packages of gunpowder. However, when they detonated the gunpowder, most often only about half of the bore would detonate and collapse. Uh, requiring quite the intensive cleanup job, what they would call the mucking the tunnel, pulling all the debris out, and then having to try over again. Uh, trying to reconstruct what a daily operation in building this tunnel would be like, it appears that in the mornings they would be boring the holes. Around noon they would detonate what they had worked on. Then they would go for lunch break before returning when most of the dust had cleared out. And then the afternoon was spent mucking the debris. Rinse and repeat for the next day. In total, this project would cost $37,000 to complete. And half of that money did not even go to the manual labor inside the tunnel. No, it actually went to the masonry work to decorate the portals. Because they decided, it said, you know, this is the first American railroad tunnel, part of this monumental Portage Railroad that's going to bring Pennsylvania back to prominence in transportation. This is going to have some Roman Revival architecture on both ends. Now, if you look at the eastern portal today, it doesn't look all that grandiose, and that's because uh, sometime after the, uh, the railroad closed, somebody came up here and grabbed all the quarry work, all the elegant work that was done on it, and reused it elsewhere in the Cottonmaw River Valley. However, the western portal has been restored to its original appearance. So we're gonna take a walk through the tunnel. Don't worry, I, I got a light down here in my bag, and I will see you on the other side.
a few feet inside of either portal, you'll find that there's a stone lining, and that's to protect passengers on the Portage Railroad and technically today, hikers on the trail from any loose stone from falling at the mouths of the tunnel. Just purely blasted and carved through bedrock, 900 feet. I don't know how well this is showing up on the camera. Very ominous, very spoopy. Reminds me of that time I visited the Mystery Flesh Pit National Park. <laughs> Those that know will know. I'm gonna presume the Park Service put these metal abutments in, and you can see them throughout the tunnel to support it. So you know, the, so the Allegheny Mountain doesn't come down on my head. I, I really don't want that. Here we are on the western side of Stable Bend Tunnel. And the rail line would have continued down, down the grade to Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where it can offload its load of canal boats to head west to Pittsburgh and beyond. And there's that Roman revival I was talking about on the other side, where a considerable portion of the funding for the Stable Bend Tunnel Project went to. Because, you know, engineers are not above showing off their handiwork. <laughs> I don't blame them. What they had achieved was enormous, especially in the history of the United States of America. Now, I'd mentioned this was the first railroad tunnel. It was not the first tunnel ever built in America, but it was considered the third. Uh, the first two were canal tunnels, and in fact, the first transportation tunnel in the United States was also built in Pennsylvania. It's on the east side of the state, the Union Canal Tunnel. Number of graffiti, historical graffiti, I suppose, inside the western portal entrance. That one there looks to be 1883, that one up there, 1906, I believe so. 1989, that's the more recent one. I think I'm telling you they were desecrating federal property. No way, no, this wasn't purchased, this wasn't open until 2001. Many sightseers passed through this tunnel during its brief operation for the railroad. According to the wayside here, those included Charles Dickens, probably the most well-known traveler on the Portage Railroad, but also include Jenny Lind, P.T. Barnum, Chief Blackhawk, Mexican General Santa Ana, and the body of President William Henry Harrison after he died less than a month into his term. The Portage Railroad closed in 1854. Uh, most of its property was became possession of the Pennsylvania Railroad. Elements of it would be incorporated as a railroad grade for that new rail line around the Allegheny Mountains. However, they did not actually use the Stable Bend Tunnel, instead bypassing it, which you can probably hear the bypass throughout this video today. However, it did end up seeing another purpose, something the engineers never intended, and that was for plumbing. Uh, so a uh, water treatment plant that was in connection with the Bethlehem Steel Corporation here in Johnstown in the 1940s uh, sealed up portions of the tunnel and laid piping through it uh, to provide uh, water access to their facilities down in Johnstown. And this kind of sad derelict, uh, occasionally picnic enthusiasts will travel up here, and I'm even talking in the 19th century, would come up to this tunnel, hike up here, and there's photographs of them having a picnic around it. 
Uh, it wasn't until the late 20th century it just became a historical site, part of the National Park Service. And in 2001, it was opened up for public access. And it's a two and a half mile trail the whole way from start to finish. Uh, in the past, in October, the National Park Service have offered lantern tours telling some spooky tales of the construction on the Portage Railroad, including the tunnel. All of this intensive labor would culminate in the opening of the Portage Railroad in 1834, and it lasted 20 years because a lot of the technology that would be innovated in this railroad construction and to improve upon it would essentially deem it superfluous. Can we construct the railroad over the Allegheny Mountains? Yes, we can. That would lead to the creation of the Horseshoe Curve, which made this a completely useless route and made the canals also useless. But there are a lot of different innovations made in the construction of the Portage Railroad. So though its life was very small, all of the innovations, including the construction of the first American railroad tunnel, would all contribute to the improvement of America's infrastructure throughout the 19th century, would allow it to greatly expand into the 20th and 21st century. So lessons learned from the construction of the Portage Railroad are still important in understanding engineering, especially in North America. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Now, the good news for you guys is you're done with your journey to the Stable Bend Tunnel. The bad news is I got a probably about an hour's walk back <laughs> to the car. So a couple ways you can support this channel in the meantime. First, be sure to hit the like button down below because that lets the algorithm of the TubeU and of Rumble know that history content is important, that you do want to use social media for a positive in the world, not for a negative. You want to learn from having access to all this information at the tip of your fingers. So hit the like button to do that. And if you want to follow me on my future journeys, be sure to subscribe here to read out productions and if you want to go the extra mile supporting me you can go to my Kofi page the link is in the description below where you can buy me a cup of coffee because I'm gonna need that caffeine after the hike back to the car here and if you want to become a member of this channel you can join our garrison for a small monthly fee and you'll get a few small bonuses through the Kofi page thank you for watching we'll see you next time so I am having the absolute worst experience. I feel like I'm playing like a first person survival horror game right now. You can't see it on the camera, but how the sun's hitting the west side of the tunnel, it is illuminating my frames, which have like an orange tint, if you've ever noticed. So my lenses have this red glare around it, like I am very injured in a survival horror game. Joy.